So we're going to talk about ultrafiltration today. So if we remember back to our nephron, we have a afferent arterial coming in. We have glomerular capillaries. We have an efferent arterial leaving. We have then some slits in the glomerular capillaries, and these are known as fenestrations. We then have the basement membrane. And then around the outside, we have podocytes. So I'll make it a different color. Podocytes, which are cells which help hold in this basement membrane. Okay. Around there, we then have the renal capsule or Bowman's capsule. Now, all of this is in the cortex. So this whole region is in the cortex. It then drains, the filtrate then drains into the cells of the proximal convoluted tubule and it goes down the lumen of the proximal convoluted tubule and selective reabsorption occurs. But today we're just going to look at what happens in ultrafiltration. So, first step is how do you achieve the hydrostatic pressure to make ultrafiltration happen? And you achieve that through there being a difference in the efferent arterial, and the efferent arterial is the one coming out of the glomerulus. So E is for efferent, and A is for afferent. So the blood comes in through the afferent arterial and leaves through the efferent arterial. Now that means that we achieve a hydrostatic pressure where the blood and the plasma is all pushed against the glomerular capillary wall. So it's all pushed everywhere, pushed against because of the small efferent diameter and the larger afferent diameter. This achieves a hydrostatic pressure. <laughs> now it's pushed against the wall and then it's pushed against the basement membrane. And the basement membrane is the filter. And this is a filter and it allows through everything with a relative molecular mass of 68,000 and lower. So it will allow through water, urea, creatinine, glucose, Glycine, glycine, nucleic acids, RNA, all of the products of digestion, but won't allow through big plasma proteins and anything that's cellular, so white blood cells, red blood cells, platelets, anything like that. Now, what passes across is 20% of the plasma goes across and everything else that that 20% contains. So if we consider what the renal glucose levels will be in the plasma, if you think that here it's say 4 micromoles or millimoles or 4 anything of glucose per litre, then it will also be 4 here, it will be 4 leaving here in the efferent arterial, and it will be exactly the same in the Bohm's capsule because the concentration of the glucose will not have been affected by the presence of the basement membrane. Because so the filtrate that passes into the um, Bohm's capsule and then down into the proximal convoluted tubule contains everything in the plasma that can get squeezed through this. So this is all of the bad stuff, say the urea and the creatinine, and all of the good stuff. So the glucose, the amino acids, you know, DNA, RNA, etc. All of it comes pouring down through the um, down the lumen um, of the proximal convoluted tubule. And the next story is how do you reabsorb the stuff you want? How do you get rid of most of the stuff you don't want? And then how do you balance exactly the amount of water that you want to be absorbed and reabsorbed into back into the blood plasma so that your blood has the correct water potential? Again, feel free to like or share or subscribe or any other YouTube type behavior. And the next video will be on 
selective reabsorption of the proximal convoluted tubule.